Hi all, welcome to my channel, welcome to my world, to the world away, and can't wait to do this one. We've now got pack eight of Agora models build the Shelby Super Snake. Look, it looks like a thin box, but believe me, there is a hell of a lot to do in this one, and I can't wait. Basically, we're going to be attaching the rear wheels, attaching the rear shock absorbers. We're going to be doing the steering, uh, which means that we'll be able to move the front wheels with the steering wheel, and we're also going to be doing the exhaust system. So, uh, loads to do in this one. I think that's all that's going to leave, then, is the engine and the bodywork. So, uh, <laughs> it's really cracking on with this. There is one thing I just want to show you that I actually missed out in the last pack. So if I just bring over the front tyres here, just to let you know, what we should have done was put these tops down here and put them in with MD02 screws, which I've already done here, as you can see, and that when they turn, the wheels turn absolutely brilliantly. So make sure that these two on the top here are held down with the MD02 screws. Now another thing you're going to need in this is a, the pack of MP01 screws that you would have had in stage 16. Now if you haven't got these, it does say into the instructions to get in touch with Agora, they'll send some out for you. Just bear in mind though, you do get spare MP01 screws in every one of these builds. In fact, in pack 8, you've got three spare straight away there, and I believe you need six for when we actually put the exhaust in. Uh, so uh, I just thought I'd give you that little tip at the start. Now, if you want to get hold of this yourself, I've put down the link here to Agora Models. That's the Agora Models website, and you'll be able to order the Super Snake from Pack 1. They've also got an accelerated starter program, as you can see here, where you can get the first few packs in one go, so you can catch up to where I'm building at the moment. And uh, if you are looking around the site, you'll see some other marvels that they've got there, which is the Terminator, which I've got down there at the moment. Uh, obviously, the Shelby Super Snake, you've got the Cobra, which is coming out later in the month. And uh, you can now register your interest for the Battleship Bismarck, which is sitting just there and looking absolutely brilliant. But uh, uh, that's one meter 25, just so you know. It's gonna be a big thing. It's not gonna be able to stay there. Uh, but obviously check out Agora Models website and you'll be able to see all these models and you can build along with me on the Super Snake, uh, which we're about to do now. So without further ado, let's get cracking. <laughs> Okay, so stage 56, we're going to be doing the left rear brake and shock absorber. Make sure everything's out of the box here. And as you can see, we've got MP03 screws, MP01 screws. Uh, we've got the shock absorber. We've got the uh, brake here. We've also got a little pin, which we're going to need as well. And sort of like a, a catch there, which is going to actually house the shock absorber. So I'll get this pack open because the first thing we need is the shock absorber cylinder, which looks like that with a hole just at the top there. And we also need the brace that this is gonna go into. And quite simply, this is just gonna go into here just like that, but it needs to be held into place, which is why we've got the pin. Now the pin has got one smooth side, one rough side. And if you remember how we put these pins in, you may need your tweezers for this, but basically you put it in with the smooth side and then you use some tweezers or pliers just to push that home. So I'm gonna make sure that that goes out the other side here, just like that. And then I will get my pliers here. I think for this one, I'm gonna use my duck build pliers here just to put them in and then push that home. Just like that, easy way to do it. And as you can see, that's now attached perfectly to that. Now, if you wanna get hold of yourself some of these, these are in my Amazon store and I've put a link just down here so you can get hold of these. These are invaluable. Now we need to bring over what we've done so far for the Super Snake and we're going to be turning this upside down. I'm actually going to turn it this way around because it's actually this side that we're working on here. Now to get this in, we're going to have to take this plate off that we put in before. Now there's going to be quite a lot of taking things off in this stage. Don't let that worry you. Uh, it's just keeping parts in place for when we uh, have to put other parts underneath. Mainly we're gonna be taking these off on the each side here, just keeping the screws safe. And eventually we're gonna be taking off one of the floor pans as well. Now, probably best on the top camera, you can see you've got little indent in here. Basically in that indent, we're gonna have this lug going inside it. Now it can only go one way. So if you put it one way and it doesn't look like it fits very well, turn it round and put it in the other way. So I'm looking how mine fits. And to be honest with you, I had it right the first way. Now that's going to be put in place with an MP01 screw. So remember, if you still need some of these screws, you're only using one in this stage. 
So you can keep one to the side, which I'm going to do. Saves happen to open up another one. So hold it in place with your hand here. We're going to turn it over just like that. And we're going to secure it in just to that hole here. So what I'll do is I'll just put the uh, screw gently balanced on there. And then we'll get that screwed in. And make sure that's in nice and tight. Once that's in, we can turn that back over. Okay, so what we need to do now, we need to take the plate that we just took off and the shock absorber, which looks like this. Now this is gonna go into the end there, just like that. It's gonna be held in with the other screw that we get in this, which is the MP03 screw. So I'll get them open. So holding that this way around, put that in the end, just like that. And that's gonna be held in with the MP03. You want to make sure this is a real tight fit because you don't want that going anywhere. It should be able to hold itself in just like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to be putting it down the shaft of the cylinder we just put in just like that. And then once again, we're going to be putting this back where it went to over there and putting it back in with the screws that we took out there. So here's the first one. And last but not least, Here's the second one. And that's all good. That's the shock absorber in place. Now the other item you're gonna see in this pack is the left rear brake. We don't actually use that in this stage. That's gonna be in stage 57. And this is what stage 57 looks like, where we've got the tire, which is gonna look really good because it means we're gonna have a rolling chassis now. So what I suggest you do is go and put the kettle on, make yourself a coffee because you're gonna need some boiling water. Now, as you can see, I've got a big bowl of boiling water here. I'm just going to drop the tire in there and it sinks to the bottom. I'm going to leave that in there for about a minute just to soften up. Now, obviously, be careful. This is boiling water and you don't want to scold yourself. So take necessary precautions. I'm going to be fishing mine out with my duckbill pliers. I've got a mat here or a little bit of cloth so I don't get the workstation uh, wet. And then I'm going to show you how to mold the rims into the tire. So what we're going to do is I'm going to push that to one side. I've got my little bandana here. I'm putting it on a bandana. I've got the rims here. And obviously when you put the rim in, you want to make sure that uh, it's facing with the valve outwards. Uh, so we're going to be pushing this into the tire, kind of like in that direction, but it's probably going to be best on the top camera here. So what I'll do, I'm going to fish out the tire now, place it there, and then we'll start getting this rim in. And as you can see, it's very mm, easy to quite manipulate, actually helping if you actually probably pick it up is the best way push it round don't be afraid to use a little bit of uh as we call it in britain welly <laughs> and as you can see make sure that rims all the way in dry it off and i'm going to let that cool down now but as you can see that's in absolutely perfectly now believe me the water really does need to be boiling so when i do the next tire i'm going to have to go downstairs and boil the kettle up again but uh let's continue with this stage so what we're going to do first, we're going to put the brake into this side of the tyre, obviously the opposite side to the valve there. As you can see, we've got a little notch there and we've got the same notch on the other side of the brake. We want to put this silver side down. So when we put this in, it's going to go in nice and flat, just like that. Now it is quite loose in there, but as you can see, I can't rotate it round. So we're going to bring over the car again, like you can see there, and we're going to be putting the... Uh, whole tire and brake disc on the spindle there to hold that into place just like that now we need to put a screw in this side and once again that's an mp03 screw which we just had from the last stage so we're going to put that in this side here and make sure that's tight now you want to make sure it's as tight as possible because you don't want this wheel to wobble and there we go and that's that tire in you want to ensure that the tire turns like that absolutely brilliant now when you do tighten it in you don't want to over tighten it you just want to put it in enough to hold that wheel in uh, there is a risk here of uh, double threading it so uh, if you just put it in hand tight that'll be absolutely perfect and then all we have to do is turn it around the front way so it's now on three wheels as you can see there and we're just going to finish it off by putting the hub on with the super snake logo and we'll push this into place just like that. Excellent. 
that's that stage complete. So if we turn the car back over again, this time we're going to be working on this side doing exactly what we did for that side there. So this is stage 58 and we've seen these parts from stage 56 so I'm going to get them all out the bag here and we're going to repeat exactly what we did in stage 56 which means we need to take out these screws here that's one one this side excellent I'll just leave that down there for a second we're going to open up the pin as we attach the uh, shock absorber cylinder to the joint that's going to connect it to the pan of the car so once again that's the joint this is the cylinder that's going to go in just like that there we'll get the pin in this side here make sure that feeds all the way through and when i'm happy with that once again i use my duckbill pliers and push that home into place just like that and then this once again is going to go into I don't know if you can see that into the little indent we've got on this side here now and again just check the seating of it if you're not happy with one way turn it around and go the other way as a matter of fact I've got it in first time there which is absolutely brilliant now this is going to be held in with MP01 screws as you can see we've got that in there and again if you need a spare there is a spare one in this pack so I'm going to hold that in with my hand turn it over and then this time the mp01 screw is going to go in this side just like that put this into place and when that's in we can again turn the vehicle over and as you can see that's now locked into place on that side and then again mirroring what we did last time we're going to put the actual shock absorber into the end here securing it at this side here with an mp03 screw so once again i'm holding that loosely in there just so i can get this in So as you can see, that's now in like that. And then once again, we're gonna push this top up here, insert the shock absorber into the shaft. A little bit tricky this bit is. And then once again, we can put this over the lugs here and screw that back down into place with the screws that we took out there. That's the first one. And over this side, that's the second one. And now they're locked into place. So this is looking like that. But what again, I'm gonna do, we have got another brake disc, which is gonna be used in the next stage because we're gonna put this to one side. We're gonna bring up our boiling water again, and I'm hoping it's still hot enough to actually do the next tire, which is basically uh, stage 59. <laughs> And straight away, while the water's still <laughs> quite hot, I'm not going to say boiling, quite hot, I'm going to soak it. Now in this, we also get some more MPO3 screws, which we're going to attach that to uh, the uh, actual vehicle in a second. And once again, we get a Super Snake hub. Now I'm just going to leave that soaking for a good minute. And when that minute's passed, I'll put that once again to one side here. I'll get my bandana hat down here, which is now ringing wet. <laughs> we'll fish out the tire with my duckbill pliers, just like that. And then being quite quick, we'll get this into place. Now, in this case, as you can see there, the water's nowhere near hot enough. So what I'm gonna do is boil this water up again, soak this again and get the rim in. And there we go. Once that tire's done, just clearing off the excess water here. It should look like that. It does bear in mind as well, obviously, make sure the valve side is the same as this white rim here, because obviously the other side doesn't have that. So that should look like that. So once again, we're gonna bring over the vehicle just like this. We're gonna put the brake on, which again has got to make sure that the notch in here is going into the spindle notch on the back of the tire there, so that doesn't turn. Keep that in one place and put the tire on the vehicle, just like that. And then we secure that down with an MP03 screw. Put that in like this. And again, tighten it, but don't over tighten it. So around about that will be absolutely fine. Make sure that the tire still turns. 
as you can see there turning absolutely fine there and then the last thing we need to do is just cut open the hub which has got the excellent super snake detail again looking just like that and we'll just press that into place on this side of the tire just like that so now if i turn this over we have now got a car which as you can see is a rolling chassis on all four wheels and all four wheels are turning when uh, i move the car which is absolutely brilliant <laughs> Now stage 60 is the exhaust system. So we're gonna need all the parts in this and we're also gonna need the spare screw from the MPO one. So I'm just gonna put that to one side and we'll open this up. We're not actually gonna use this for a second. I just wanna keep it to hand because what we are gonna need, once I've got these out, just show you what we got. We have got some MPO one screws here and we also got some MPO two screws, but we are gonna need this part of the exhaust that we made in the last stage uh, or the last pack which was pack seven now we are going to be putting this into the car but to do that we need to take off the floor plan now this is the floor plan here and it's being held in with 11 screws so what i'll do is i'm going to take all 11 screws out and i'm going to lay them down here in the order i've taken them out uh, because they are all different screws so let's do that now So that's 11 screws out. I don't know if you can see this, but I've laid them out exactly in the order I've taken them out from the vehicle, which means I should now be able to take this floor pan out. Just like that. Now I'm gonna turn the vehicle upside down now so we can actually see the differential here. And the way this is gonna go in, it's basically gonna go over the lugs that you can see one, two, one two at the back there so we're going to feed this underneath the uh differential and drive shafts at the back there i think that's what these are isn't it i'm not sure <laughs> get that in there like that and the next one in like that and ensure that the lugs are in position where they need to go on each side just like that and when that's in place, this is where we're going to be holding it down with the MP01 screws. So what we're going to do is it sort of like holds itself in anyway, but we're going to be putting screws into the six holes that that has now created. So I've got the MP ones here. We'll get that started. I think I'll put this one in here next. Then we'll put in, uh, let's see, one this side next. That's that one in. Next one, I'll do the one behind it. Now we've got two more, one here. And then the last one is just this one here. And then that's all done on that side. And once again, on the back, that's those mufflers into place. So all we've got to do now is put the floor plan back down. So to do that, we want to put it underneath this lip here. So we're going to be offering it to this section, sort of like at an angle here. So we can get this bit underneath this lip. If you are having trouble, it might be worth just loosening these two screws just a touch on either side here just so you can lift it a touch to get that under so as you can see that's now under there tighten those ones back up again one two and three and then replace all the screws that we took out of here
and when they're all in as you can see the floor plan is black on and that muffler is now in place behind there so i could put that to one side because what we're going to do is we're going to assemble the rest of the exhaust here and quite simply ensuring that the pegs that you can see here are facing towards this end of the exhaust uh, they're just going to go in here one there and one the other side there and that's going to be held in there with some mp02 screws so i've got them here let's get them open now these screws are really really tiny and you don't want to over tighten these so hand tight and one further turn that should be enough here's the second one these are very delicate parts and as you can see from the size of the screws they really don't need to be over tightened here's the third one here i'm going to show you what one of these looks like on my screwdriver there you see what i mean very tiny one this side excellent and the last one just into there Excellent, that's the exhaust system all screwed in. Now once again, we're gonna bring the vehicle over and we're gonna start putting this into place. So the way this goes is these lugs that you can see here and here are gonna go into these two holes that you see there. And we're gonna put the ends of these into the ends of the muffler that we put in there. Now to start off with the two lugs that we've just put in there are gonna be held in with MP01 screws. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one side in. Probably best actually to put this on its side now to do this. Which means it's probably going to be very hard to show you actually what I'm doing. But we put the first screw in, it's just going to go into this section just here. Now I am aware it's hard to see, but I really do need to make sure that these sections here are incorrectly because it's going to uh, hold the entire orientation of the rest of the exhaust. So that's the first one in, and I'm going to do the other side to where that goes, just here. And now we're going to be positioning the lugs on the other side of the exhaust into the front of the chassis here. So I'll get that one lined up. And once again, this is an MP01 screw. So I'll put one in there now. That's one side in. I'll spin this around and we'll do the other side. And there we go. That's the exhaust in place. So we can turn this upside down now. Still a rolling chassis there, but we don't need this now. We can put this to one side as we do the next stage. Now stage 61, we're going to be doing the steering column and the steering wheel. So we get all these parts out. Quite a few bits of details in this one, but the first thing we need is the metal steering rod like this. And we're going to be inserting that into this metal sort of like a ratchet here. Uh, but to do that, we're going to need quite a bit of force for that. So you are going to need to use a little hammer. Now what I've done is I've put it in a little bit. I'm not going to be as strong as using a hammer, but I am going to just use the flat side of my um, duckbill pliers here just to bang that into place and it should be in enough to keep that in place so that's not going to come off as you can see there so what we're going to do now is we're going to take the switch looking like that and we're going to be threading that through this section here so it comes out the other side kind of like that and it's going to lie in the little square section that you can see there so if i bend that back on itself pull it down the switch will sit flat into this section. As you can see there, it should fit flat into that section, like that. And obviously, uh, when you press it, you should be able to hear that click. So once that's in place, we want to make sure that the steering column can go in, and that basically sits just in the sort of recess that we've got there. So that looks just like that. So we've got that much just coming out of this end here. And then we're going to piece all of this together by placing this section here with the stalks already on to hold all of that into place just like that. 
Now these are going to be held in with two screws here, which are MP05. So I've got those screws here, we'll get that in and that will hold all of this into place. And then we've got one more, just going down the bottom here. Again, making sure that the wire is not trapped between any of these holes that we're screwing into. So when that's done, it should look just like that. Now what we want to do is we want to rotate this round so the flat side of the steering column is pointing upwards, which means that when we actually put the wheel on, it's going to fit perfectly onto that spindle there. So we can push the wheel on just like that. Obviously make sure it's aligned. So it's a 90, well it's actually straight as you can see there. And we can also see the switch button just behind there. So we'll be able to push this and activate the horn. And that's activated by actually pushing the super snake uh, button here inwards. So if we get that in now, and as you can see, it should click like that to activate that switch. Uh, and that is the steering wheel attached to the collar. Now these two parts, the connectors, we need for a later stage when we actually attach this to the vehicle. So I'm going to put them to one side as we do the next stage. Now this is part 62, but in this stage we don't actually do anything but open it up. So it's just a case of showing you what this part looks like. And as you can see, it's part of the trunk area here. Now in stage 63, we're going to be assembling the spare tire here, which means that we need to uh, put this in hot water again. And then we're going to be attaching the steering wheel to the vehicle. So I think the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to go downstairs, get this in some hot water and we'll get this put in. And there we go, I'm getting a dab hand at this now, but that's the spare tire done now. So that's going to be going in the uh, boot soon. Now we're going to bring over the vehicle interior that we were working on last time, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting the steering wheel uh, into the section, obviously, down here. So the spindle comes out the other side. So what I'll do, ensuring that it's facing up at the moment, we want to ensure that both the spindle and the electrics go through the hole in here. So let's get that in. So that's one in. I'll just make sure that the, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm just making sure that the electrics are going through as well. There we go, that's the electrics through. Ensure the steering wheel sitting quite straight. Now, I've turned this round. Hopefully you can see what's going on here. Uh, basically we've got a lug just here, which is gonna go underneath this section here. We're going to hold that into place. We're going to line it up and hold it into place to put a screw in there. Don't know if you can just see that now, uh, but what we need to do is we need to put the steering column connector on top of this. Now that looks just like this that came in the last stage, looking just like that. So what I'll do is I'm going to get a screw just through the other side ready to go and I'll attach all of this at the same time. Now, all of this is going to be held in place with an MP05 screw. So, going to be a little bit fiddly, but I'll get it in and show you what that looks like. And when that's in, it should look just like that. And then when we actually turn the steering wheel here, as you can see, the pinion on the other side should turn. Now, it locks so that it doesn't go any further to the right there or any further to the left there. Now, I'm going to pick this up bring over the chassis because this is the fun bit now we're going to be putting the chassis on top of the uh we're actually going to be putting the interior sorry on top of the chassis now what we want to do and make sure the wires are coming out the front here and we also want to make sure this steering pinion that you can see here as a matter of fact if i show you on the top camera gets engaged with the rack underneath it so that's going to go in there just like that now before you do engage that you want to make sure that the steering wheel is straight and the wheels are also straight. So when it's in, just like that, I'm going to push that right down in there now. That's now engaged to that section with a perfectly straight steering wheel. Now what we need to do is we obviously need to press that pinion onto the rack using the steering column adjuster, which looks like this. And this just quite simply pushes into this gap to ensure there's a tight fit on that. So we're going to push that into place to make sure that's completely locked down in there. Everything's straight, so when I turn these now, as you can see, the wheels turn. How cool <laughs> is that? 
to the left and to the right. God, I'm happy that's uh, gone as easy as it did. <laughs> and now we're going to be fixing the interior to the chassis, first off with some MP01 screws. So I'm going to turn it upside down, making sure nothing falls out now. And the first two screws are going to go into these two holes here, probably best on the side camera for that. So we get these in and that's going to lock this into place. So here's the first one. I'll do the other side here. I'll do the front one here. Nice and tight. Do the one on this side. And finally the one just down here that's now completely in place I'm just gonna check that the steering still works oh that's excellent and as you can see this is now going nowhere and it's all one complete unit now I'm gonna put that to one side as we do the last stage now the last stage we're gonna be putting some trunk panels in and we're going to be fitting the spare tire so we'll bring over the panel that was in the stage 62 i believe and we've got these two sides here to put on so quite simply when we push these on these have got some little pegs as you can see just here uh, so basically they're going to be going the first one will be going into here so that this detail here is facing on the outside so that's just going to go in like this push it in just like that and the same on the other side and we do the same on the other side here so when that's together that's going to look just like this now we don't have to secure this any other way at the moment it's only going to loosely fit by that because what we're going to do i'm going to wheel the car back in here we're actually going to put this trunk section into the back section here now as you can see we've got these on the outside here they're just going to fit over the top of these lugs here but we don't actually secure this in either so let's put that in so you get an idea of how this goes i'll put this one over this side just like that lift this up to help accommodate that underneath and then we put this one over this side here just like that make sure that's all fitting uniform and that's the trunk in again we don't have to do anything else with that at the moment i'm going to just put that to one side because the last thing we need to do is take the spare wheel that we were working on last time we've got the actual uh, holder for the wheel here which has got a spindle at the top which is just going to go in like that we're going to hold it from the other side with an mp3 screw that should be enough just to hold that in place there and then all we got to do is just put the screw section which actually puts down this actually just pushes in it doesn't screw into anything but it's going to fit just in the top like that now if you see we've got a lug just at the bottom there that is actually going to fit in if i bring this over again it's going to fit into the hole that we got just there so i'm going to line this up and we'll put this in and there we go and that's the tire in place and that's all there is to do in this pack and how cool does that look <laughs> i could just play with that just like this to be honest with you spare tire in the trunk's looking good i think all we're ready to do now is the engine and then start working on the frame but uh, look at this smile on my face. I love that pack. I mean, this pack recording time took well over two and a half hours. So uh, I don't know what this is going to be editing down, but God, I really, really enjoyed that. Just some of the things to play around with it. Obviously, we've got the uh, we've got the retractable chair section there, which we can put down just like that. Leave it flat. We've got the spare tire. We've got all the steering now working. Obviously, when we push this. You can hear the horn there. Look, the steering turning, as you can see there. <laughs> I absolutely love this build. So there you go. If you want to get this for yourself, once again, just head over to agoramodels.com and you'll be able to get this from pack one. And if you want to have an accelerated start, just like this picture here, you'll be able to get, I think it's the first six packs at the moment, you'll be able to get yourself sort of near the stage that I'm working on at the moment. But if you like that video, please remember to give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please remember to subscribe. Other than that, take care.